Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of On The Minute, and it is Wadapalooza week. I am Arm & Hammer, that right there is Justin LaFranco, and you are watching this Wednesday evening, the eve of Wadapalooza 2019, a sanctioned event we're going to have at the end of this weekend, yet another male, female, and team qualified for the CrossFit Games. I'm sorry, invited to the CrossFit Games, Justin. <laughs> yes, exactly. That was quite the introduction, Armin. I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm working on it. And you know what? As important as Wadapalooza is, and we are definitely going to be getting into a whole bunch of Wadapalooza stuff, I want to start today by saying the streak is broken, everybody. It's finally happened. The dry spell is over. Canada has not one but two sanctioned events now. That's let's right. just let's everyone go ahead and and give give Canada a nice big pat <laughs> on the back. Yep, uh, Canada's finally here. Oh, Canada! Congratulations! Both the west and the east side of Canada are going to be represented. Uh, but in addition to that, Dublin, Ireland is going to be getting their um, their first sanctioned event as well. Let's run through it really really quick. So here we got um, the filthy one fifty competition that's been uh, going on for the last couple of years in, in Dublin. That's going to be now made a sanctioned event. We've got uh, the Cross CrossFit Atlas Games. That's been another one that's tra driven a lot of um, top name athletes uh, to compete there in Quebec. And then we have Canada West CrossFit Comp uh, Championship. And so those are going to be the three new events. Um, I think that brings the number total now to 21 sanctioned events for, for the 2020 season. That assumes that every sanctioned event that is currently in the roster right now on the schedule um, re-ups their contract. Um, so the one thing to keep in mind about all of this stuff is that those are one-year contracts. So if they choose to extend that, then there will be 21 competitions going into next year. Absolutely. And uh, honestly, I've got to say one, I'm very pumped about Ireland. The Emerald Isle is getting a uh, sanctioned event. This is this is big. I mean, you know, obviously Europe is very, very well represented when it comes to population of CrossFitters. And you and I are kind of, I think, on the same page in that the more sanctioned events, the better. I mean, honestly, you're going to be cutting so many athletes over the first couple of days of the games anyway. You might as well just invite a ton of people to show up and compete. And these sanctioned events are going to create you know, a market and a circuit that I think is going to really take off and, and hopefully support some professional athletes. And of course... You know, close to my heart is seeing Canada supported, not yeah. because I'm Canadian yeah, or anything, I, but I, because, <laughs> you know, someone has Armenian to look out for Armenian Canadian, I think, is, is, is really what it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, this underscores like the growth of sanctioned events now to 21 potentially for the tw for, for next year underscores something that we've been talking about for the last couple of months, which is um, the need for a more formalized qualification process for top athletes. And we just released a story last week about how um, the uh, 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 Down Under CrossFit Championship is actually using the Open as the primary qualification method. They're the only sanctioned event there that is that is chosen to do that for this year. And... So that's going to be a great test case coming up to see, okay, how does that work? Does it make sense? And the point to be taken away from that is, you know, the Open's been qualifying people for, for um, regional competitions for the last 11, uh, what, seven years? Sorry, I was just about to uh, bumble there. But uh, yeah, but like <laughs> for the last, last 280 <laughs> years. years. For the last seven years, it's been qualifying people for the the, the elite, most elite co competitions. So um, it's proven itself as being effective and able to do that on a global and grand scale. So why shouldn't it be good enough for other sanctioned events out there? And so that's a question that we'll see play out here. But with with a growing season here, uh, going, moving to 2020, um, uh, they're going to have to start figuring this out and start thinking ahead. So. Before we get there, though... We've got something coming up in just uh, about 48 hours. Something's kicking off really good. And Correct. that is going to be Wada Palooza, which is probably one of the most fun and and um, engaging fitness, really, festivals that is in the CrossFit circuit for the sanctioned events. And you and I are both going to be down there having a, um, a blast, I think. We sure are. I, this is going to be my uh, fourth or fifth Wada Palooza really? in a row. And I always enjoy going down to Miami. Miami is a January, great city. Of course. It's it's much better to be in Miami <laughs> in January than it is 
to be in a lot of these other other parts of the country in, in January. But, you know, may, maybe occasionally it rains and maybe it gets a little bit chilly, but the weather in general is usually much, much better there than it is anywhere else. And not to mention, we've talked about this in the past, and I'm going to say it again. Wadapalooza is the largest collection of CrossFitters and the CrossFit space outside of the CrossFit games themselves. And that is not something to just shrug off that there's a lot of interesting and exciting parts to having that many CrossFitters come together, even in a city where it's really just a drop in the bucket, like Miami, it's just great to have that many people together. You get to see and meet so many different people involved in the business side of things and the athletic side of things, the gym side of things. And I think just bringing in that many people is valuable, much less the fact that we're going to be seeing a, a top level competition here. But we should talk about that competition. Yeah, let's uh, let's first preview and day one a little bit here. We've got we've got a huge lineup of events, a big packed. Three, you know, unlike some of the other competitions and unlike the games, this is going to be three straight days. And these are going to be three very packed days from what we're seeing so far. Here's a quick run through on what we're seeing for day one's events. We've got a very early 5K beach run. Think of sand dunes, think of soft sand, think of Baywatch. Very similar to what you saw athletes having to tackle on at, at Dubai when they were running in the sand dunes in there. That is gonna be followed up by event number two, which is double vision. That's gonna be 15, 12, nine, 12, 15 of double dumbbell snatches, burpee box jump overs at 30 inches and 24 inches. It's gonna be a very fast event. This is a run and gun. And then the last event, which they, which they just released uh, yesterday was, uh, or is, excuse me, uh, five rope legless rope climbs, 45 foot sand book, sandbag carry at 200 pounds for the men and 140 pounds for the women nine thrusters at 115 for the men 80 pounds for the women followed by 45 pound sandbag carry with an eight minute time cap um which is going to also move really really fast armin what are some of the what are some of the athletes that are that are striking you is going to have really strong positions coming out of day one two words noah olson this guy is I mean I don't think there's a more Miami human being on the face of the planet <laughs> than No Olson. And you might be able to take him out of Miami and put him into Atlanta for a little bit, but the guy's back and he lives the Miami life. I mean, with the last time I went and and you know kind of documented a little bit of his training uh in the in the open, I think it was the 2016 open was the year that he won. That open he was living the Miami life. I mean, he was on the beach. He was enjoying the pool. He was doing I don't think the guy has worn buddies. a shirt in about three years. So that if you looked anything. like that, would you, Justin? No. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. So no, no I Olsen <laughs> really comes to mind here looking at these first day events. And it's not just about the environment. The guy is comfortable in the water. He's comfortable on the ocean. He's comfortable on the beach. Those things we all know for a fact. But there's a couple things that are interesting to me here. One is relatively short range of motion when it comes to events that are going to be, you know, really punishing longer range of motion, double dumbbell snatch, burpee box jump overs, the uh, the uh, thrusters, those are all things that are going to benefit a guy who's on a smaller side of things. And the other side of the uh, factor is that Noah's actually a very strong and capable gymnast. So when you put him into rope climbs and we put him into those burpee box jump overs and you put him carrying that sandbag, those aren't the types of strength movements that might tax him, like say a max snatch event or a max clean jerk event. Right. He's actually gonna do very well at those types of strength movements. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very excited to see Noah compete. Yeah, I tend, I tend to agree with you on that. Uh, and then on the men's side, I think it's worth highlighting you know, Travis Mayer and Patrick Vellner um, too. I think, I think Travis Mayer, again, I think he's already warmed up for the season, um, and he's he's faced a very similar event, uh, you know, as the beach run. He did that in Dubai, um, and I think that that's going to set him up well for what to expect there and how that's going to fatigue the body overall. I think he's really in a strong position there. And Patrick Vellner is just Patrick Vellner. He's a hoss. The guy is super consistent, except when something goes totally off the rails, pun intended. And then, you know, um, but he but he is very consistent in competition. So very excited about watching those two coming out of day one. Um, on the on the female side, uh, there are four athletes that I've highlighted here, and, and, and it's a bit for different reasons here. Haley Murillo, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, Danny Spiegel, and Tia Toomey. Um, we don't Tia doesn't need any introduction, but the other three comp the other three competitors. 
came from Dubai. And I'm giving them a little bit of a plus one and a leg up here because of the fact that they've warmed up their competitive, um, you know, sort of sort of spirit. They're they're in it. They've done it. They've they've gone through it. They've gotten some of the jitters out and they've faced other athletes. They've gone outside of the gym and they've done that. And all three of those athletes have gone and done a similar run and they also know what to expect. They know how to tackle that over a long period of time. 5K is a lot of time to be spending in the sand. And so, you know, I, I think what Sigmund's daughter placed ninth in that event, Danny Spiegel placed 21st, and that, that was not being a, 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 an event that, that I think would have played to her favor. Um, and then Haley Marillo placed 24th. So they, they weren't breaking any records here, but I've been giving them a little bit of leg up on day one because they've, they've shaken out some of these pre-competition jitters already. Sigmund's daughter, though, uh, I, I'm really excited to see how she's going to come out. I, I, I was very impressed with her performance in the last competition. She did not look injured. She looked like she'd healed up really nicely, and she was very clean in her performance. So um, I think this is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Tia, though, uh, she's I, uh, uh, 100% she'll be first out of date. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's, a, that's a strong statement. Bold. And I, listen, I'm not going to disagree with you saying that the two-time <laughs> fittest woman on earth is going to continue being the fittest woman on earth. I definitely am going to yeah. you know, lean into that. But I am going to say that there is an athlete – on this roster who I think you might be overlooking. And that athlete is Kristen Holta. Kristen Holta has proven time and time again that she cannot be written out of events in any capacity and she has regularly been placing incredibly well at the CrossFit Games solely based on the fact that she has the grit and determination to make it through just about any workout in any time domain. This is the exact set of events that I would say is going to play into Kristen Holtz's favor. Again, similar to Noah, we're not going to necessarily see her destroy that very heavy snatch workout that's going to be coming up later on in the weekend, although the weight on the women's side is significantly lighter comparatively to the men's side. But we are going to be seeing her truly throw down in an epic fashion when it comes to events exactly like this, because this is where she shines. You give her something odd to carry and move. You give her some strange Body movements, weight, like a gymnastics. double dumbbell snatch. Exactly. That's exactly where she's going to shine. No, no end in sight here for, for the amount of entertainment we're going to have from these athletes. Absolutely not. And I think the, the team competition and we're going to go ahead and just whenever we talk about the team competition, unfortunately, we're very sorry, everybody who's competing in a team of three, we are not talking about you. We're no. talking about no, the wacky and wild world of super teams that have like converged <laughs> on. To be to clear, Miami. mostly we're talking about Travis Williams. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say I would say there's probably four teams. And his, and his team. <laughs> there are four teams that come to mind. There's Plus Ultra, obviously. That's Travis Williams' team. Then there's uh, CrossFit Mayhem. Uh, and then there's the uh, the Invictus teams, both of them. And if you want to throw fifth in there, the Misfit team is is also very strong. And, and I mean, listen, of, of all the teams we're talking about, I just listed five of the ten teams. Every single one of those teams is stacked with talent. But... One of the things that you and I have been discussing, and I think has been discussed a lot, especially considering how Dubai went, is how are we going to be seeing teams deal with true team events? And it seems to me that even though the events might have some individual factors, it's, I think event three is kind of a relay, what we're going to be seeing is a lot of synchro, a bunch of the worm. And even during that 5K, based off of the Instagram video, they're going to be pulling like classic CrossFit games. You have to hold a rope tied to your your teammate during the run, which does nothing to help you run any better. By the way, in case you're wondering whether that's a benefit while you're running, it's absolutely not a benefit. No, it's certainly not. Um, and I remember I was standing actually at the 2014 CrossFit Games when that rope apparatus was used. Um, for a two or three mile race around um, the stadium and literally you'd see athletes dragging their partner and the other one just basically holding on for dear life just going like uh, 
I, I literally can't run any faster. I'm going to die and then just collapsing at the finish line, which I'm sure we're going to see a little bit of that. Because um, this, this this would be expected to be a pretty tough run, I think, for, for these athletes, and especially when you start pairing them up and they have to run at the same speed. Um, you're going to have some imbalances there that are going to be natural. One of the things that I like about the team competition that we've seen at both Dubai and now this weekend coming up at Wadapalooza is it is truly an elite field. And with such a thin amount of competitors, and we're just talking 10 competitors, one, it gives every one of these teams practice of what it's actually going to be like at the games. So you're, you're talking about at the games, less than a do- less than less than 20 competitors, or you know, one team per sanctioned event, basically. But what else it, 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 it kind of throws a wrench into the gears is that the scoring gets very thin. I mean, every single win is going to be just the amount of margin of points that you need to stay ahead of the rest of the field. And what that means is every event is going to be absolutely critical to winning the actual title at the end of the weekend. And that is just going to make for very exciting competition. And the fact that it's such a small elite field just adds to every single one of those splits is going to make a big difference. 100%. You know, a couple things I think, you know, to, to, to watch out for when as the competition's leading up here and going into day one, two, and three um, is this is sanction event number two. Okay, and the season's really now well underway. Now that we have the rule book, we have a good understanding of what's gonna happen to athletes should they come in second place. But it also is a key indicator for how athletes are gonna be performing throughout the rest of the season. A number of these athletes are slated to compete in a whole host of additional events across the season. Some of those athletes are currently competing on teams, but some of those athletes are current, are, are also individuals. Haley Marillo is one of them. Danny Spiegel has compete, is, is signed up for another event, uh, Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Championship. And so that will make it, I think, four or five. But keep in mind, and this is something we haven't talked about in the last couple of weeks, it matters where you finish in Wadapalooza for, two, for three reasons. Number one, if you are in second place, you have an opportunity to go to the CrossFit Games. If you are in second or third or fourth place, you have an opportunity to go compete in fitness, uh, at Brazil CrossFit Championship. If you are second or third place, you have an opportunity to go compete at the uh, fittest in Cape Town. Because of the partnership that, that Wadapalooza struck with these other events, there's now a reward for finishing on the podium. And if you finish on the podium, you have a second chance to go and compete in another competition somewhere else. Now, the logistics of that are gonna be a little bit complicated uh, as far as how to make it down to to to, um, to Cape Town, South Africa in a very short period of time. For Brazil, it's gonna be a little bit easier, but now there's a little bit of a reward system. And this is the first time we're gonna see that playing out. We have a rule book, we understand what second place means in the global CrossFit season. And now there's partnerships that have implications for how you finish on the podium. One of the things that people were kind of caught off guard by, I think was the idea of win and you're in. And where it was a huge difference was compared to regionals, where essentially at regionals, there was only one region where it was win and you're in. Every other region was if you're podium or if you're top five, you've gotten a spot to the CrossFit Games. And what we're seeing with the backfilling rules is that essentially if you're podium or top five at any of these sanctioned events, especially the early ones in the season, you have a very good chance of getting an invitation to the CrossFit Games because most of the athletes who are winning these early sanctioned events are actually going to be also qualified through either the national championship or the top 20 in the open worldwide. For the most part, um, it's working. You know, we're not we're it not absolutely seeing, is working. We're, we're not seeing like working. people leaving CrossFit in droves or like some sort of doomsday scenario that 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 others were were predicting or perhaps hoping for um, to to prove Greg Glassman wrong. But that's not really what we're seeing right now. I think I think for the most part, there's a lot of adults in the room that are saying, "Well, I want to make this work, and I want to make this work." And okay, um, and we're willing to work together in some some sense to to make that a reality. And so, um, kudos on them. I think the sport's continuing. But we still have a lot of we still have a long ways to go before we get to the games, and we have a lot of events to, to cover and to fill, um, and and there's a lot that can go wrong. So uh, so far so good, but um, you know these events are are um, are learning through this process, and I and I think that I think it's shaping up for tw- for a really really solid 2020. But we're only in 
event number two. Uh, yeah, we're very, very early in the 2019 <laughs> we're very early season. In the season. But with that macro view out of the way, let's take a little bit of a more micro view at what you and I are going to be doing on the ground at Wadapalooza. Because I've got to say, I'm very excited to be in Miami this weekend to get to see a lot of people, witness some great competition, connect with some really cool people at the same time. But also, I think what you and I have planned is is going to really, you know, elevate i think some of the coverage that that people are hoping to see from from the competition and what i mean by that is if you are watching this right now i th- i hope that means that you are actually a fan of this and maybe <laughs> not not just watching it because you think we're a couple of douchebags and you like laughing at us although i guess that's cool too hey but whatever draws a the crowd i guess <laughs> of on the minute this is going to be occurring at least two more times over the weekend we're going to have recaps and previews each day of competition and and we're going to be bringing you guys the on the boots boots on the ground on the boots boots on the ground i think is the phrase i'm looking for we're going to be bringing you the nanos on the ground coverage of wadapalooza that at the end of the weekend is going to leave you saying something like wada competition Oh, ho, 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 ho. Wow. wow. Okay. I have so been holding that in all episode long. Wow. I, that has been just on the tip of my tongue. I'm really excited. I That's, don't know. Are you excited about this, Justin, or what? I, I, mean, I mean, I'm excited about Water Palooza. I'm very much not excited about what you just did, but that's, <laughs> you know. That's fine. That's cool. Uh, Get on my level, Justin. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're going to be down there. We're going to be having a great time. We're going to be delivering daily coverage, both, you know, together and separately from Morning Chalk Up, as well as from Arm & Hammer TV. He's going to be on the ground, as well as myself. Um, please stop by and say hi to us. We're going to be having some fun. Um, my te- Me and my team will be mostly hanging out, um, you know, at the, the studio that we have at the RPM booth. Um, that's where we're going to be filming our On The Minutes. If you've got some fun stuff that you want us to talk about, come and reach one of us. And, uh, and I'm sure we're going to find some time to do that. Uh, we'll be interviewing a lot of different athletes and getting some perspective on the ground on how things are going from the competition. Um, and hopefully uh, grabbing in some coaches and talking some strategy with you too and delivering some unique content. So Over the course of the weekend, Justin, you don't know this. I, I'm, this is the first time I'm telling you as well. Wow. This Over the news. course of the weekend, <laughs> I am going to be filming an entire music video to Will Smith's Miami. And if you want to be Love in it. that music video, all you have to do is find me at any point and we will <laughs> lip sync parts of the music video together and I will edit it all together into just one wonderful Wada Palooza festival excellent. music video. It's going to be great. I, I hope you guys join me in doing that because it's going to be really weird if I'm the only person doing it and that, I'm just all alone in that. That's so. going to be weird almost no matter what, but I'm definitely going to watch it. There's a good chance I might share it on in the morning track up, but don't hold your breath that's on that That's what one. I like to hear. Anyway, folks, this has been an episode of On The Minute. Justin and I are going to be on the ground at Wadapalooza in Miami, Florida, enjoying the weather, the competition, and of course, you guys, the fans. Thank you so much, and we'll see you guys there. We'll see you there.